we will now immediately uh, listen to our, our commissioner, I would say, uh, Mr. DG Ener, um, the commissioner for energy, who has obviously one of the most challenging jobs in the whole of Europe at the moment. Uh, and she's doing a great job. Uh, I know she's very intensely working uh, ever since the energy crisis, the war in Ukraine uh, got going. Uh, she's working very intensely, intensively to put the policies and measures and actions on the table. And that's also why, unfortunately, although she had wanted it, um, she could not be here because Brussels is buzzing with policy action at the moment with a lot of discussions. And obviously, we want her to be there to take care of uh, you know, the energy transition in the whole of Europe uh, and also on the islands. But we know that she's uh, very much um, enthusiastic about the project. And uh, so she will uh, uh, talk to us live from Brussels with some uh, words of encouragement. Thank you very much. And I hand over to the commissioner. Yes, good morning from Brussels, uh, ladies and gentlemen. And, and indeed, I am very sorry that I was not able to join you today. Uh, but I just spent 15 hours uh, with uh, members of parliament and um, council in negotiated the gas storage proposal. And uh, it made it impossible to travel. But, uh, but I'm happy to connect online and speaking with you. And, um, and uh, speaking about islands, well, we have well over 2,000 inhabited islands in the uh, EU. And uh, Rhodes is a beautiful example. Islands are unique because of their size, autonomy and uh, geography, uh, their energy and climate charity has uh, positives and negatives. And let me begin by setting the context. The war in Ukraine has disrupted the uh, global gas and oil markets um, and our energy security. Prices are high and climate experts remind us that uh, we have reached 11th hour, it's just a few years, left peak emissions. And ironically, all of these events have given us a snapshot into the experience of an uh, island energy system. High energy prices, unstable supply, and a lack of secure interconnections. We want to undo each of these challenges and bring a clean and secure energy system to the EU and our islands. Tomorrow, the Commission adopts a um, repower EU plan. And this is our strategic vision to claim control over our energy system in the EU. The plan will set our measures to pull away from Russian fossil fuels, Greece, the European Green Deal remains, of course, the central element. And we need even more renewables and more energy efficiency. And we have to revisit how we use energy at home, but also in public spaces and businesses and industry, uh, and while moving around. As part of the Repower EU, we will present the Save Energy Plan. And this plan has two branches. First, um, accelerating and strengthening the energy efficiency measures already envisaged in the FIT Part 25 package. And second, behavioural changes to achieve our uh, short-term energy savings. And tomorrow we will also bring forward the EU solar strategy, including solar rooftop initiative. And solar energy potential across Europe remains largely untapped. And this is also true for many EU islands. In this day and age, it makes no sense that, despite the size and geographical advantages of our islands, the share of renewables is often even lower than on the mainland. And our strategy will address the main barriers, and it will look at the best ways to involve citizens and communities. We know that um, permitting is one of the key challenges for renewable energy projects uh, anywhere in the EU, including on the islands and uh, offshore. And it can take up to 10 years to get a permit for a wind farm. And with tomorrow's plan, our aim is to streamline the process by amending um, the new the Renewable Energy Directive. And we are also issuing a recommendation and guidance and permitting with uh, steps member states can take 
uh, on administrative deadlines and one-stop shops or also spatial planning. And overall, we want and we need to accelerate the transformation already uh, that is already underway, but uh, we know that uh, islands are well placed to lead the way. And they have their own local energy system, a microcosm of uh, those on the mainland. The solutions tested locally to decarbonize islands, they can be the perfect training ground to understand that the, the transformation of our European energy system as a whole. And I've also seen excellent examples of islands already moving away from fossil fuel based energy systems. The Di Danish island, Samso, has already achieved its uh, goal to reduce CO2 emissions close to zero, effectively becoming carbon neutral. And this has been done through a series of renewable energy investments in wind turbines, local biomass fuel, district heating plants, solar panels, and electric vehicles. And uh, meanwhile, the uh, the Greece in Greece uh, has become the first island in the Mediterranean fully self-sufficient in energy. Uh, it invested in hybrid power station which produces um, energy from its very own wind farm and solar power generators which it later stores in batteries. So islands are also ideal labs for testing and the demonstration of innovative energy technology hydrogen based solutions, but also floating multi-use offshore energy platforms and uh, fully electric ferries. Uh, there are projects uh, producing hydrogen from solar power in Mallorca. Uh, this Green Island uh, uh, project received a grant as flagship project of EU hydrogen strategy, and we can use this as a blueprint for hydrogen islands across Europe. And islands also prove that it is possible for renewable energy and other economic activities to coexist, even where the land is very limited or under protection. So reunion has demonstrated uh, synergies between um, energy and agriculture by investing in solar PVs integrated into greenhouses, Unlike crown mouth uh, panels, greenhouse PVs avoid uh, conflicts in land use and offer resistance to climatic events such as hurricanes or cyclones. And several other islands are testing and deploying clean energy solutions combined with uh, water desalination plants, local transport infrastructure, small fishing and recreational boats. And despite uh, these great examples, I was just giving to you, it's difficult to understand by much of the potential of islands for clean energy is still untapped. And then new sense of urgency, I mentioned, calls uh, for radical transformation. So financing underpins this change. It is being mobilized for investment in clean energy transition across Europe, including substantial envelopes earmarked for the islands. And I'm happy to see that many member states have included island-specific investment for energy transformation in the recovery and resilience plans. So just to give you a few examples, Portugal has earmarked support for the clean energy transition strategy of Azores. Italy has earmarked funds for green islands component, and Greece has put strong emphasis on electricity interconnections between the islands and the mainland. But also just transition funds are used for islands to alleviate the socio-economic impacts of energy transition. Um, so in Crete and Scotland, uh, this already makes a difference. And removing uh, the rest of the barriers for the energy transition on islands and developing a pipeline of major projects is essential to unlock investment even further. On this, the Green Energy for EU Islands Secretariat is working on identification of main barriers and solutions for energy transition on the islands. And the Islands Secretariat also provides dedicated technical assistance helping islands define their transition agendas and identify and develop green energy projects and to get access to investment. So ladies and gentlemen, 
I genuinely believe that giants can be, and some already are, the champions of energy transformation in Europe. A few weeks ago, we selected 100 European cities committed to becoming a carbon neutral by 2030. And I trust that we have equally ambitious islands prepared to join the challenge. Change is possible, change is in sight, and change takes the collective efforts of everybody on board, especially in the most difficult times. And with this in mind, I hope that from this year's forum, we take back inspiring examples and practical solutions to move our islands to the next level. Thank you. Well, thank you very much, um, Madam Commissioner for Energy of the European Commission for these encouraging words. She spoke about the opportunities, she spoke about the challenges, but also she spoke about the urgency. And that's definitely uh, something we want to convey here. It is urgent, we need to take action. Uh, and the Commissioner has given some, some examples of where action is happening. Um, and we'll have much more examples during the next days.